Man, this league is something else. Raptors lose 116-109 to the Oklahoma City Thunder in Toronto. Now, I'm not going to blame this whole game on the referees. The Raptors played a horrendous second half. But the whistles down the stretch. I mean, it's just a joke. Watching Serge Ibaka get called for a flagrant foul. I don't know how you call that a flagrant foul. A guy's going out there to challenge. How else is he supposed to plan his foot? For one thing. The second thing. The shooter is going forward and falling forward. So they're going to meet halfway like that. And you call a flagrant on that? You review the damn thing too. And you call it a flagrant foul. Okay, I'm not sure what the heck they're seeing, but whatever. And we go to the fourth quarter, and in the dying minutes, just like in the last game against the Thunder, the whistle comes out. And the problem I have, look, I'm not mad if they're consistently terrible. But we're hearing all game long on the broadcast while the referees are letting them play on. Looks like the whistle's been put away a little bit. There you go. And then in the final few minutes, we see some pansy calls, and the Raptors lose. They show a little bit of a comeback, and then the whistle shows up, and they lose by seven. I'm not saying that's the reason the Raptors lost, because like I said, they had a terrible second half. But I'm sorry. That foul on Paul George there in the dying couple minutes where he jumps and starts flailing like a, a fish out of water, and they call a foul on it. I'm like, yeah, mm -hmm, I, okay, sure. You got to remember Kawhi Leonard is um, a defensive player of the year. One of the best defensive players in the game. He's not some random Joe Schmo coming off the bench. But okay. Couple trips down the floor later. Kawhi Leonard drives on Russell Westbrook. Puts his arm on his chest. Westbrook falls and pushes off. Whoa, whoa. Offensive foul. Are you blind? Like, are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. I mean, come on. The ref referees, especially Tony Brothers in the last game... Help the help the Oklahoma City Thunder get back into that game. And in this game, I don't know who the heck was making the calls, but they were damn well stupid in this game. And the Raptors lose by seven. Now, that's my little rant on the referees because they were bad once again tonight. Down the stretch. That's the problem I have. If you're bad from, from minute one to 48... Fine, I'll complain, but it's a consistent thing the entire the, in the entire in the entire game. Fine, but it was in the dying five minutes of the fourth quarter that the whistle just showed up out of nowhere, and that's the problem that I have. Now let's get to actually why the Raptors lost. I don't know what just happened there. If you guys saw the video, skip. I apologize. They play an amazing first half. The ball moves. You score 29 in each quarter. And the Raptors are plus, what is it, by 11? I think it is, or maybe it's not. They're plus 10. At the half, they're feeling good. They've scored 58. They don't even give up 50. They're playing amazing basketball. Second half, the Oklahoma City Thunder put the ball in the paint and kick it to three. And the Raptors get lost. And they start draining threes left and right. The Oklahoma City Thunder made 20 threes. The Raptors did shoot 13 to 25 from beyond the arc. 52%. But the problem is. You made seven less threes. That's the issue there. And um, you know. And, and, and another issue was. The ball. I mean the Raptors had what like 15. How many assists did they have in the first half? I don't know. They had quite a few in the first half. And in the second half, they probably had a total of like five. The ball just stopped moving. The shot selection was confusing. I'm watching Pascal in the dying three minutes down by four. Take a jump shot from mid-range against Russell Westbrook. Drive on the guy. You've been doing it all game. Get into him. You've been doing it since the first minute. Why are you changing it up? I don't know. They just looked lost. The ball stopped moving. Look, I love Marcus Gasol's ball movement. I love the way he does it. But he took one shot in the game. He made it, and it was in the die. That was probably in the final like few minutes of the game, or or like what was it was. I mean, was it free throws? No, it was it was a, it was a regular shot. But he didn't take a shot all game. I love the six assists and the five rebounds. But man, you gotta take some shots, buddy. Yeah, Pascal had 25 on 9 of 14 shooting. Yeah, Kawhi Leonard at 37 on 12 of 13, 12 of 23 shooting. They were great. Van Vliet, I gotta say, didn't play well tonight. 
Yeah, he had five assists, but he only gave you eight points and three of 11 shooting. Struggled mightily and was 0 of 3 from 3. Danny Green was spectacular as he's been all season long. He had 19 points and seven rebounds on six of 11 shooting. On six of 11 from three. He was a spectacular player. Abaka, again, 11 points, six boards. But the problem was the second unit couldn't do anything. And that was the problem in the last game against OKC. Their bench outscored our bench by like 16 or something like that, or 14. You look at the bench now, the plus minus is Ibaka was minus 14. Powell was minus 12. OG was minus 6. Jeremy Lin minus 12. You know, I mean, they didn't play well. And they just lost themselves in the second half. Now everyone's going to sit here and blame Nick Nurse, and I'm not sure why you're going to blame him, because the Raptors as players got away from what worked in the first half. Now you can... You, I mean, people are going to do it because that's what that's what fans do. They love pinpointing, well, this guy should have came in at this time, this guy should have done that this time, bad switch on this guy, why is he playing at this moment? Everyone's going to complain. But in the end, your guys that get it done in the late game situations were out there in the fourth quarter and didn't get it done. Look, the Raptors, like I said, for, scored 58 in the first half. In the second, I think they scored what? Uh, what is that? 41? Or sorry, 51, sorry? Still not bad, but you gave up 68. That's the issue. Now, again, I mean, look, the, the, the Thunder are not a team that's usually good at shooting threes, and they made 20. All right, you got to give kudos. And we all know Paul George is a freak in nature, and especially after fouling out the last game and only getting 13 points, you knew he was going to come back with vengeance. Plus, you got to realize the magnitude of games for either team. The Raptors are second in the Eastern Conference, and I don't care how, how well Philly's playing lately. The Raptors are almost guaranteed to be second place in the Eastern Conference. You look at Oklahoma City, and before this game, wasn't it like a four-way tie from like fifth place to eighth or something? Yeah, fifth place to eighth. They're all tied with the same record coming into the game. That's a massive magnitude of a game. You could be playing Portland in round one, or you could play Golden State in round one. That's a big difference, if you ask me. So the magnitude of game for each team is not as high. Now, for the Raptors, you had the lead by 10 at the half. You didn't do the job. You had a horrendous third quarter. You, you, I think they, it was, they were outscored by 13, 35-22. The offense shrivels up, and you couldn't play defense. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna blame referees for the for the way the Raptors lost. Did they lose in the dying minutes because of the refs? They okay. How about how do I, how do I reword that? The dying minutes was controlled by the referees. How about I say it that way? But the entirety of the second half was controlled by the Raptors, who did not play the ball play well. They didn't. Great first half, terrible second half. And they weren't bad for the first bit of the second half. They were still up by 10, like, midway through. And then they flipped the switch. And an OKC went on a huge run. Couldn't miss a three. And the Raptors couldn't make a shot. And, and the Raptors, look, you were down by three going into the, into the fourth quarter, which is doable. You can still get back from that. But the inability to play defense in the fourth and, and, and play consistent offense was a problem. Now, Kyle Lowry did not play once again tonight, so people are going to use that in his excuse, and you can, because, I mean, he's, he's a very good player on this team, and he's the energy of this team, and then you fire Van Vliet in the bench, and that could help the bench immensely. But you don't have that right now, and I'm not going to use that as an excuse, because we saw this team beat Oklahoma City in OKC a couple nights ago. So we can't really use the whole Kyle Lowry thing as an excuse. You can, but I don't know how valid it is, right? Now, Kawhi Leonard played 40-plus minutes in the last game against OKC. He played 36 again tonight. If my math is correct in the way the Raptors work in, in, in my head, he will not be playing Sunday against Charlotte. That's just my thought. He's played, what, 35-plus minutes in the last two games and hard-fought minutes in both games. You have Sunday against Charlotte. Guys, look at this. The remaining schedule for the Toronto Raptors is very favorable for Toronto. We're going to go through it real quick here, all right? You got Charlotte, Chicago, New York, Chicago, Orlando, Brooklyn, Charlotte, Miami, and Minnesota. Record-wise, the best team you are going to see is the Brooklyn Nets, if I'm not mistaken here. Unless Minnesota's had some crazy terror. No, they're not. Uh, the Brooklyn Nets, I think they're like one game over 500, two, aren't they? Yeah, 37 and 36. Could be a first-round matchup. That's record-wise... 
record-wise, that is the toughest matchup the rest of the way. That's why I'm saying I'm not worried about losing the Eastern Conference, or losing second place, is because of the schedule. Now, with the schedule the way it is, and the way load management's going, and, and the way injuries are working, do not be surprised if in the final, you know, in the remainder, what, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine games of the regular season, you see guys like Pascal take a night off, you see a guy like Danny Green take a night off, you see Kawhi take a few nights off, and you see Lowry take some more time off. It would not surprise me, because you're not playing. These nine games don't really mean anything. It's more or less just kind of get your rhythm heading into the playoffs. Tonight's game was a tough one. You play a good first half, you play a bad second half. It happens. Anybody who's going to start saying this team is garbage and is going down the hole is, is not a true fan and does not truly watch the games. You, if, you, because you don't, you, if you don't watch the games, you don't know how Kyle Lowry actually impacts the team. You just look at the box, box score. Well, he only had 13 points. He had a terrible game. If you watch the game, you know how much energy Kyle brings and you know what he can do. And he hasn't been there. And I'm okay with that. I'm okay with Lowry sitting the last couple of games. I don't care if it's against a good team. It's not like it means anything. You could say it's a statement game, but I mean, we've had many of those this year. And we've lost some and we've won some. But in the end, the statement games come in April and May in the playoffs. And the Raptors are locked into the playoff spot. They're, I mean, next to being locked up into the second, second seed in the East. While well, you're still three games up on the, uh, uh, on the uh, 76ers. Isn't it three games? Uh, yeah, so it's three and a half with the with the loss today. But again, you got to remember. I think did they already count that? Last? No, so it's still three more losses. You can look at games back and get a little nervous. It's still three losses, and with Charlotte coming up and the Knicks and, and teams like that, those are wins. And I don't know what Philly's uh, schedule looks like down the stretch. We're gonna have a quick look at, at this before we uh, before we wrap it up. They play Atlanta, Orlando, Brooklyn, Minnesota, Dallas, Atlanta, Milwaukee, Chicago, Miami, Chicago. So ideally, they have a pretty favorable schedule as well. But each team is going to lose once. As the Raptors, you just got to focus on yourself. Because we're in the driver's seat, and you got to find a way to get the job done. Now, the next game for the Toronto Raptors, guys, and the one we got to look forward to the next, look forward to next, is Charlotte. On Sunday evening, it's a 6 o'clock tip-off at Scotiabank Arena. And the Raptors coming off the tough loss tonight. They look to rebound. We don't know what we're going to see. If Kawhi's going to sit and Lowry's going to sit, who knows? Um, but what we're going to see is Charlotte, a team that is not very good. They're four and six in their last ten. They were initially in a playoff spot. They're now seven games under 500. And I don't care what you throw on the floor. You should win that game against Charlotte. All right. So you know what, guys? That is going to do it for this one. You guys enjoyed this video, and you guys did not enjoy the ending of the game today. Smack that like button. I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below what you think of the game. Um, I mean, if you, if you want to throw an MVP out for the Toronto Raptors, you guys can. You can give it to Danny Green. You can give it to Siakam. You can give it to Kawhi Leonard. You guys can go nuts about who that was and what you thought about this game, the officiating, the way the Raptors played in the second half. You know, the schedule the rest of the way, the resting, all that crazy stuff down in the remaining nine games of the year. All right. So, uh, Evan and I will talk to you guys podcast edition. It'll be probably next Thursday. Link is in the description for the podcast channel and for the podcast itself on iTunes. Twitter is also down below. Follow up, send me a DM, do all that great stuff. And I will talk to you guys. It'll be Blue Jays edition Wednesday afternoon, I'm going to say. As we'll be talking to you guys in the Blue Jays season preview. Uh, the Jays season is right around the corner a week yesterday. Six days until the Blue Jays get going uh, against Detroit on Thursday. And I'll be talking to you guys Wednesday, Jays edition there. As for the Toronto Maple Leafs, guys, I'll be talking to you guys tomorrow tomorrow night as the Leafs are uh, at home taking on the New York Rangers at Scotiabank Arena, looking to build off that big win against the Buffalo Sabres and look to get looking to stay ahead of the Montreal Canadiens and to continue to push closer and closer to that playoff spot and that, and that third seed in the division. All right? And as for the Toronto Raptors, guys, like we said, their next contest is Sunday evening, 6 o'clock tip-off at Scotiabank Arena. The Raptors welcome in the Charlotte Hornets. Who the heck are we going to see in the, in the Raptors jersey that night? I have no idea. We're going to have to wait and see what all, how it all plays out, though, guys. I hope you guys know this video. We'll talk to you guys then.